Hey there, puzzlers! My name is Flip, and today I'm going to cover a beautiful packing puzzle by Jean Claude Constantine. If you've been following my channel, you've heard that name a lot, because not only is he a prolific designer, but he has some of the most inventive and creative puzzles that I've ever seen. And this one is no exception. The puzzle consists of three pieces. These are the first two. They're marked out like a meter stick, and at each of these points is a little metal piece that allows it to bend. There are some pieces that are shorter, like this one, which is only two, and some that are much longer, such as this one, which is of length six. And then finally, there's this grid. And the object is to fit these two pieces into this grid, so that no piece is outside of it. One thing that really helps you is the fact that there are two levels, so that you can fit pieces underneath. I can't say much more without spoiling the solution to the puzzle, so let's get started. To solve a puzzle like this logically, a good way to start is by making assumptions about the puzzle. For instance, you might assume that pieces will only go horizontally and vertically, not diagonally. And if that's the case, then you can use a common puzzle solving technique, which is to look at the biggest pieces and the smallest pieces. This is the biggest piece of the puzzle. In fact, it's so big it doesn't actually fit among the smaller end of the puzzle. It has to go among the longer end. And if you assume that the piece is all going to fit in horizontally and vertically, then there's only a few places that this can go, because it has a piece of length 5 attached to it. For instance, you couldn't put it on this third row here, because the other piece would be too big to go up, and too big to go down. It must either go on the second row or the first row. It could also go on the second to last row or the last row, but those are the same under symmetry just by rotating this 180 degrees, so we can focus on just the top two. Similarly, it doesn't matter whether it goes in this way or that way. This isn't a proof, but if you think about putting this on the last row, You've knocked off a good number of spaces underneath it. Well, if you put it on the second to last row, there's room for pieces to go underneath and fill into other squares. So when I was solving this for the first time, I started with it on the second row. From there, a number of moves are exactly placed. The other thing I assumed while working on this puzzle is that we were going to fill in every spot completely, that we weren't going to leave any holes empty. If that were the case, then only certain pieces can go in this corner here. Trying out some possibilities with the first piece, it's hard to fit this first piece into one of those corners, if not downright impossible. But we can maybe use the second piece. If we were to do that, what would it look like? We can try fitting the end with a 38 into a given corner. When we do that, this piece is forced to go horizontally, so that it doesn't hit the long piece. And then the other long piece that's attached to is forced to go underneath. The fact that it leaves the other corner empty indicates that maybe use this extra piece there. But the problem is that these pieces then can't fit together. There's no way to fit this long piece into the puzzle. If this approach is going to work, we're going to have to fit the end of the piece labeled 50 into this corner or that corner. If you fit the 50 piece into one of these corners, this small piece that has to go underneath this long piece here. Otherwise, you can't fit this other piece here into the puzzle. Let's see what that looks like. It looks something like this. Once again, this piece is forced to go somewhere. This piece is forced to go somewhere. And suddenly, we're in a pretty good look looking situation. We have a very long piece here. But both of these guys here are on top so we can slide it underneath, just like this. So now we're in a situation where we have to figure out which way this long piece is going to go. It could go either to the right and then up through here, because again, both of these two are on top, or it could go to the left and then up. But if we think about this piece, if we were to take this piece of length five and bring it up this way, it would stretch up to here. It would block this square with a low piece. And at that point, 
You couldn't go right and then down, or left and then right. So this first piece couldn't fit into the grid. So this piece has to go to the right and then through. This also forces this end piece on the 26, which was originally out to the right here, to come down. Now we just need to fit in this first piece. We could go either right and then down, or left and then right. The biggest problem is we have to fit this piece in at some point. It needs to be one of these long rows where it fits in. And so going left and then down seems to make a lot of sense, since putting this underneath would give room for this. This gets a little bit delicate at this point, but let's see it in action. And then finally, the last two pieces come into place. And there you have it. Now that solution method happened to work out, because it turns out the puzzle met our assumptions. It was able to be fit into the grid with just horizontal and vertical movements. And it covered every square. Those are reasonable assumptions based on the puzzle, but if either of those had been invalid, we would have had to keep going, finding different ways to fit that long piece in, either as a diagonal or in some other crazy way. We may have also had to leave squares uncovered. It would have been a more difficult puzzle, but we would have gotten there using the same ideas, working through all the different possibilities, and eventually coming to the solution. If you're interested in more puzzle content, please subscribe below, or follow me on Twitter, at Flep Puzzles. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. And as always, happy puzzling.